So we have spawning down on the bottom right for Psystorm Gaming. It's Namshar in the red. And his opponent in the upper right, representing the Cranky Ducklings. Give it up for Vindicta in the blue. Mr. Miggs. Now, these two players are both players that are going to be really battling for a playoff spot. Uh, I would say that Vindicta would be my pick to make the playoffs over Namshar in a heads-up direct confrontation. But... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't count out Namshar. He is a player whose mechanics have always been exceptional. He's always been a bit of a natural at the game. Uh, I remember first watching him on the come up and thinking, oh, this guy is very good, very strong, very skilled at what he does, and he really knows what's up. Uh, Vindicta, meanwhile, has been on a bit of a tear recently, particularly in the World Team League qualification matches. He went something like, I don't know, it was like 20 and 3 on yeah. the way to the Cranky Ducklings qualifying. And he is he is the sole reason that they qualified. He fireflied the team into the uh, into the main event. So very cool stuff. And it's going to be neat to see what he can do here. Yeah, and I think his TVZ <clears throat> in particular is pretty strong. And that, but that said, Namshar is mechanically a fantastic Zerg. So I think this could go either way, still steadfast, but Vindicta certainly has been showing it very well lately that he has now okay we're gonna be seeing something kind of uh neat from vindicta he checks in at that two minute timing says okay the hatchery is done cool i'm not facing off against anything you know particularly weird and vindicta says you don't get to take this third base vertical hatch i want to make sure you take the pocket hatch and i have a an idea about this because the reaper didn't go to that other third base i think he just wanted to make sure he doesn't take the vertical position because I think, based on this, Vindicta might have an idea about going for a tank push that takes advantage of these rocks. Yeah, that is entirely possible because that is a nasty tank positioning. Uh, see it quite often, and I, but I think that is just some really good uh, strategical play. And I, I agree with you. I think we're definitely going to see a pretty big tank push. But I guess that remains to be seen. Yeah, at the very least, it won't be a two-base tank push as he is getting the Turbo Command Center before those Hellions fire on up. The uh, extremely strong macro play for Terran. Always a big mm -hmm. fan of this build, especially on a map like Tropical Sacrifice that is quite large. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, that doesn't mean this position all of a sudden doesn't exist. You can still set tanks up here. If the Zerg player doesn't set up, uh, take down the rocks... You know, trying to deal with Marines and tanks behind this location is a nightmare. It's it's going to be pretty interesting, and uh, I hope that we do see Vindicta trying to take advantage of that. Uh, yeah, one thing Vindicta is going to take advantage of, uh, the lack of scouting information from Namshar. He's playing it extra safe with those overlords steadfast. Just not really going to get much other than some link scouting, uh, and hopefully he can at that. Yeah, and I wonder if uh, Vindicta will maybe take an opportunity with this. You know, maybe he in another game does something that takes advantage of the fact that those overlords aren't going to be able to scout his base. Some kind of Hellbat push or uh, something nope. a little bit funky. He is going into Cloak Banshee. Uh, and without the scout and confirmation, that could be pretty good. Uh, pretty standard opener, of course, but... Uh, I'm wondering if that is going to lead to that setup, like you said, of the Marine tank push. Yeah, it's uh, it's still too early to tell what Vindicta's follow through is going to be. But of course, like you said, it will be the Cloak Banshee to start things off. Vindicta was able to kill that Zergling and denied the scout. Scout wasn't able to get to the top of the ramp and see. Well, it would have seen everything, actually. Like, literally everything is right in range of a Zergling. Would have seen the third command center, would have seen the Banshee, would have seen that mm -hmm. the uh, reactor factory is still pumping Hellions, and it would have seen the tech lab on the barracks for the stim follow-up. So, would have told him all he needs to know, but Namshar, very safe player. He's getting the three spores in each base at a great timing anyways, and he's going to be prepared for this cloaked Banshee. And in fact, where is that first Banshee? Okay, it's coming in on the left side. Vindicta? Uh, he is going to be having this cloak complete and that's mm. uh that's gonna be pretty handy for him i do like the <clears throat> in a way i like it and yet 
I, I know Cyril's commented on it. He usually said, I believe he said he's preferred Lair before Double Evil, but I do kind of like fast uh, melee carapace out of Namshire uh, for what we're potentially going to see. And there it is. It's going to be the, yeah, the racks are getting dropped. I think this is at least going to be a heavy bio push, but it remains to be seen about the tanks. Yeah, now these Banshees are going to be able to combo nicely with the Hellions, and that's going to be at least two dead queens with a lot of energy. Ooh, can he get that last one? Yes, he can. And he will get the third tank as well. And look at the Hellion positioning against these links. Oh, man, this is getting out of hand for Namshar. He's got no units left on the map. If Oh, my goodness, he just stacked all the drones for a moment. They are trapped. Ooh. They are getting barbecued. It is a terrible time to be a drone. 18 drones could have hauled 22 drones. The entire base is deleted, and with that, I think Namshar is deleted out of this game. That is going to be pretty much unrecoverable damage. Yeah, that is not a position you want to oh, be in. Oh, no! Oh, well, that was, uh, that was quite something. Ugh. Yeah, talk about roast drones, my guy. That was uh, over a lot quicker than we thought initially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a very quick one. Very, very fast game. Uh, well done by Namshar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Steadfast, real quick story. Mm -hmm. Now, on the QT, I'm actually a Zerg second race. Oh. That you didn't know, I don't think. But that is the kind of stuff why I actually broke one of my keyboards with ZVT. There, there's a lot of moments where if, you're, if your opponent is faster than you and you're out of position, you can just... You can just die in the worst feeling ways possible. It is just not a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's a feels bad man for Nam. I wonder if Namshar is gonna bring us something cheeky in game two though, like a uh, like an early roach head butt or something. That's not really his uh, his forte, but maybe. I mean, he if might. if he does, I think. I think it's going to be tricky to slip it past Vindicta. We'll, we'll we'll see though. We'll see. I I wonder if maybe Vindicta might try and do something that takes advantage of the fact that those overlords weren't sent across the map. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's it's a little early to say. We'll we'll have to see how this goes, and we're gonna find out pretty soon as we get into game number two of this. Well, this uh this first day of the. Dreamhack Masters Atlanta NA groups spawning up at the top right for Storm Gaming. It is Namshar in the red. And his blue opponent in the bottom left representing the Cranky Ducklings. Give it up for Vindicta. Yeah, let's see what these guys bring us in this second game. I'm with you. Namshar isn't really the cheekiest of players. But I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm kind of hoping he brings us something spicy. Something a little different. But like you said, if Namshar plays extra safe with the Overlords again, Vindicta might just try to come in with something cheeky again. But I like that early Overlord scout for a proxy three racks potentially. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of something you have to do. Uh, Lambo, by the way, I, I hadn't really thought about the scouting patterns of this map. But he showed the absolute perfect zigzag pattern for denying proxy barracks or just in general denying scouts on this map. And it is basically you route the similar overlord pattern, but he had it pretty much down to the wire. And then you stop it right here. The mm -hmm. Or maybe, maybe it was that he even like went across. But the second overlord, I think, went and checked this location and then yep. went covered here. It was like a weird zigzag, but basically it stopped uh, at like a position where you couldn't sneak past and nothing would slip basically within like 20 seconds of your natural without you seeing it with the Overlord. Uh, and I just thought that was 
pretty awesome. It was it was very neat to see that path kind of outlined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, definitely some valuable information, especially on a, a map like Data C, where you know you got lots of little nooks and crannies and potential for cheeky racks. That's yeah. uh, actually five five head play. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to be seeing the uh, two, well, the two racks opener. It's going to be a 2 one, one coming out of Vindicta. A very old school way to play. That is pretty cool if you ask me. Reaper will get deflected for the moment. Yeah, 2 one, one could be good. Uh, I don't know how much I like it on this map in particular, uh, but... Let's see what happens, I guess, because it is uh, Vindicta coming in pretty hot. Yeah, it's a it's an old school style of play, and this this would be the kind of thing that would kind of punish a lack of an Overlord Scout. But of course, you can see that there's no Hellions. You can see that something is up. It still can be an okay build. A lot of players don't like doing it anymore because it's you know it's just not as powerful as it once was. It's not the build mm -hmm. that Bion. Uh, won like multiple world championships with, or won, right. well, won like everything for a year and a half with. Uh, Zerg players have figured out how to deal with it. Yeah, and that said, we do have an overlord that could potentially go scout, but it is a way out of position in the north uh, on this side. But uh, we'll see if Namshur decides to. Oh, uh, yeah, he's going to start bringing it in. Yeah, he will uh he will start scouting into the main base and he is kind of angling away from the command center, but I think the gas saw that pretty quickly. Namshore is not gonna be able to scout the barracks. And he has no information at the front. Okay, he mm. sees a factory flying, that is it. That is the only information. That's almost an anti scout right there. Hmm. Yeah, it was a little unlucky. But uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, a little bit of a tell for him could be if he does a little poking with the links. I think the read on the front of the natural Vindicta might give him a little bit of information as the timing goes by and he doesn't see any Banshees, no Hellions. Should be a good tell, too. Yeah. Uh, Vindicta will elect to move this out a little bit faster. Cutting. Well, not cutting, but... Uh, being okay with not having those two Marines, even loading up the Reaper right here, so literally every unit that Vindicta had was on the aggression. It will be an additional medevac and a mine to follow this up. So this is going to be an additional commitment. And Namshar, ah, he's overdroned a little bit right now. He's only got eight lings on the field. This has a ton of potential. He had a lot done. Namshar, you can see that he's canceled a spore because he thought it was something else. I love the quick pickup as he sees the queens over here. Lings are going to get out in good numbers, but this is already starting to get a lot of damage done. Namshar, though, if he doesn't lose any drones, this will be a decent situation. The supply blocks are already a problem, but Vindicta's just going to back away, and Namshar gets away with one. And one uh, good thing for Namshar, at least, he does have the double Evo down. So obviously it delayed uh, a lot of mining time. Well, not that much, but the important thing is so far he's kept his drones alive, as you say. We, I, we don't see any Bane legs in production. We do have centrifugal hooks going down, but he need, I wouldn't have hated some Banes being made a bit ago. We don't mind getting mind gets killed. That was actually pretty huge right there. And it's target fire try, trying to come in on the medevacs, but this is way too many Marines to fight with just the Lings. Like you said, he needed Bane Lings. That is a big problem. Namshar cannot fight right here. Vindicta is finally going to get forced back. Oh, the medevac is low on HP and it goes down. Ooh. Bit of a miss micro from Vindicta. Cost him dearly. Eight S or eight Marines inside of that. He tried to load up everything and he didn't click back the one medevac. Oh, nice job from Namshar. That was a very small profile. He managed to target the low HP medevac and that breaks all the momentum of this push. And Namshar once again gets away with a very scary situation and survives and even comes out of it, I would say a little bit ahead because of how yeah. much Namshar droned. Yeah, he ended up ahead. He did get more valuable trades for a bit. Um, Ooh, I don't think you should attack in here, Namshar. There's no reason to do that. Just drone out of this. He's got a lot of lanes. Yeah. yeah, just use those to take down rocks. 
again, still no banelings, nothing in defense, and he finished in typical hook steadfast. So, as much as I like his position, I, I would like to see him pump out just a little bit of banelings going for that spire. Looks like he might be going into mutas. Well, after the push. Well, I mean, oh, now we're fine. I mean, once he uh, once he forced out the, or well, once he killed the one medevac. I don't think he really needed the Banes for a while. He is starting to build them now. I actually... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even hated if he hadn't built them. Mm -hmm. Even at this point, just because, uh, you know, as long as he got enough Lings to deal with this. Now, the this little threat right here is annoying, and that's where you need the Banes. Oh, Vindicta yeah. will lift up and get out. Namshar, though, he's going, uh, he's going for a Spire. And this is... He didn't drone up as hard behind this as I would have liked, but he is adding on quite a few more drones in the last like minute or so. He's pumped his drone count up to what is going to be over 80 at this point, going up to four gases. He was a little bit low on the queen, so he's adding on five more of those. Two, two, plus one flyer attacks. Yeah, this is this is a phenomenal position now for Namshar, and he's got enough gas to, well, actually he pumps out a few more banes. Still has enough gas to build like six mutas, but he might just wait until he has enough to pop out like 10 or 15. Actually, I would love to see him wait until he has enough to pop out 15 and then go for a jump on a big drop from Vindicta. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Vind Never mind. Vindicta saw the spire. Sorry, go on. Uh, one thing to point out, too, uh, Vindicta is going into vehicle plating, it looks like. But also, he's going to have a slight lead on his 2-2 with his infantry weapons and armor. Yeah, but considering the fact that Namshar is going mutas, uh, and since this is like macro muta play, it's an extremely small advantage. Ooh, Vindicta retargeting his Widowmine right there. Look at the micro right there. Goes after the veins. Huge connection. The micro from Vindicta. You saw it. The man with the many actions gets it done with a huge, huge Widowmine retarget. Oh, and now, oh, wow. Good split right there from uh, Vin, uh, Namshar right there. Very well done to pull the Overseer away, or rather the Lings, away from the Overseer. But man, oh man, that was a value mine. 11 Baneling kills on that Widow Mine. And look at the resources destroyed. Oh, huge advantage there by Vindicta. Very nicely done. Yeah, that was very unlucky for Nebshire. That's a huge loss. Oh, Banes? The one would have... Nice splits. Yeah, it definitely could have went a lot worse. But it looks like a queen's going to fall with a creep tumor. But guess what? The Mutas had arrived. That they have. Nice biker from Namshar there. Uh, click in the portrait, pulling back the one muta that was targeted by the missile turret. Very well done. And he is going to get away with this Liberator. Well, he's going to snipe this Liberator as well. Just gets on out. Doesn't take any damage. Gets a little bit... Oh, no, he does lose one muta. Wait, was that to a... Oh, that must have been to the Widowmine or something. Or it happened... You know, I didn't just, just didn't see it. Uh, meanwhile... 2-2 has completed now. Ooh, if Namshar can get the jump on this army with the Ling Bane, there are Widowmines behind this. He's got to be a little bit careful, but one of them will go off for pretty much nothing. Oh, nice unburrow right there by uh, Vindicta. No Drilling Claws started up just yet. He does have a Tech lab factory somewhere that's pumping out Thors. Yeah, I think it might be in his natural. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and now he's building three mines at a... Well, he was two mines at a time, but he's, he's pumping out mines heavily. You really want that Drilling Claws upgrade. That is an extremely high value thing. Even since the nerf, it is still an extremely strong uh, upgrade. Ooh, Namshar, got to be careful uh, clumping up these mutas, though. Yeah, that, and now we know what that vehicle plating was for, these Thors. Oh, it's, it's, good. The it's just good against mutas in general. Sorry, go on. Uh, but this creep spread and the expansions from Namshar are very nice. I am really liking his his position on this map for how big it is yeah he, um he's got outstanding creep spread right now he's getting up into a hive uh we talked about those mechanics they are outstanding when he can get into a macro game and he's been able to do so oh he'll find this partial drop on the top side with these mutas in the main base he is oh does he save the spawning pool yes he will just barely nice. but uh nice job yeah, it was damn close to going down steadfast. But uh, look, army supply-wise, this is looking very much in favor of Vindicta for the moment. But he has to be careful not to tread too far in that. Oh, 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 God! No, 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 no! 
Oh, that's so many mutas that just went down. Seven mutas just fell for absolutely no reason. He got one Widowmine, stacked them all up, and then kept them stacked. Huge mistake there from uh, Namshar. Mass Baneling on the right side. I mean, he's getting up into an Ultra Cavern. He's getting 3-3. Three, three. He's almost got plus 2 done on the Flyer attacks for those mutas. But the single drops, they are so good against Muta play. They drag, they just drag the army all over the place because you're relying on those mutas to deal with the drops. Mm -hmm. It is just a, a very nice move. But yeah, the creep spread from Namshar is outstanding. Yeah, it's certainly helping as we're seeing here, though some of it's getting cleaned up by Vindicta. Uh, you know, this is a very, it's a very cool style of Zerg play. But sometimes I just feel like Hydra Lurker is the way to go uh, as the game scales. Yeah. When it, you when you bait out a lot of Marines and Widow Mines. Yeah, Rogue is one of like the only players I think of that would go Mutas into Hydra Lurker. Uh, and I actually do think it's an extraordinary mm -hmm. play. Good job from Amshaw right there. He manually... Oh, a couple of Widow Mines do go off. He manually made sure that those... Uh, or that the overseer stayed behind to tank the mine shot, so that the mutas didn't uh, didn't get killed right there. We are seeing burrow as well as tunneling or uh, adrenal glands. No, what am I talking about? Pathogen glands. Yeah, the the other too. glands. Uh, <laughs> and six ultras get in the field. No chitinous plating though. Huge baneling setup. Oh, good split, Ooh. but he still loses so many banelings to that widow mine. And now it's just marauders and thors tanking banes. That was so expensive for Namshar. Vindicta is trading more than doubly efficient against his opponent. Oh, God. And these Ultras, they are going to be fighting with an upgrade disadvantage without Kitness. That means the Marines will actually toast them. The Thor is going to tank so well. And Namshar, he's still maxed out, but he is just losing so much trying to clear this army. Yeah, it's up to the Mutas to try to find some value, but the Widow Mines coming back oh. in and killing a Thor. Ay, ay, ay. The Widow Mines, they got some big friendly fire, but oh man, they got a lot more unfriendly fire for the Zerg. That was extremely expensive for Namshar. A look at the battle report. Oh my goodness, more than 6,000 resources more. Uh, Vindicta will be able to find this base on the top left. I like that he doesn't lift up until basically all the Marines are picked. Well, until there's only about 10 Marines left in order to maximize the... Maximize the amount of DPS he got up there, and then he just lifts up with what he can. Gets out of there. Uh, we will see the high-capacity fuel tanks coming on in, which is very funny. The medevac upgrade, but it actually is quite handy against mutas. Oh, yeah. This is... Well, we do have the chitinous plate. No, we don't. No, we don't. He still didn't. It's not we done. still didn't get it. Yeah, he I'll hasn't even started it. I'll be honest... He's researched pathogen glands, and we've yet to see an infester. I would have really liked to see some infestors against this army. I think that could have tipped the scales. Uh, but that said, it's just looking rougher and rougher for a Namshar as we're going into nukes. Wow, the first three SCVs were just killed at, like, almost the 16-minute mark, and he has made, like, 40 mutas at minimum. I can't believe he hadn't killed a single SCV up until that point with how much he committed. So many base snipes coming in from Vindicta. Namshar is keeping off a sixth base, but Vindicta has traded so much more efficiently than his opponent, it just doesn't even matter. Does not matter in the slightest. Namshar needs to find an incredible fight, or he needs to knock out like 40 SCVs with a run by or something. And speaking of actually workers going down, nice little run by here from Vindicta. We'll find nine drones and a few units to boot. Still no chitinous plating from Amshar. He has to notice that his ultras are just getting melted. Yeah, this is the problem with ultra lists, as you know, these days. Advanced ballistics might be shut down. Nope, the ultras are getting chunked up and clumped up. Bailing's trying to go in. Yeah. Uh... I mean, he'll deny advanced ballistics, but that is not worth the losses here. He only killed yeah. two SCVs. Uh, I mean, these Ultra Lists are causing a lot of chaos. Snipes will come in finally enough to clear this out or at least shove him away. And oh, Namshar that's... has fully depleted his bank. Ooh. And we got a nuke. 
That we do, but there's the drones were pulled quite quickly. Oh, does it land? Oh, it does land, and he actually brings a couple of units back into it. Not as bad as it could have been. That that was actually pretty close to being a bit of a catastrophe. Finally, finally starts up that chitinous plating and four infestors. Oh my goodness. So late. But he has kind of cracked open this third base a little bit, and that is a point of contention that Vindicta is starting to have some problems with. Nine SCVs going down very quickly. And this is the kind of thing I was looking for from Namshar. Yeah, Namshar sure gets a nice little run by. Couple of Ultralisks. Oh, that's a big Wood of Mine shot. Couple of Ultralisks do get sniped down. And now the army coming in in separate squadrons means that the Ghosts are going to be able to push this back. The Ghost Marauder Marine and Namshar. Well, he has run out of steam here. He gets a nice fungal, but you got to look at the supplies at this point. Namshar is just not traded efficiently at all. And Vindicta... Uh, he is going to drop a nuke on this base once again. It should hmm. not be denied. Oh, oh, please, no. Please. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Namshar. Uh, okay, no, he's going to pull away at the last second. Does still lose a couple of units, but uh, this is this is getting increasingly difficult here for Namshar. He's finally going to finish Kitanus plating, but I think Vindicta just has too much momentum at this point. Yeah, if he had that earlier, I think this is another one of those tales of tech being a little delayed, uh, as we saw in the TBT earlier, which both of us had never seen. Uh, this is, so, well, got a delayed nuke or something, but I don't think this is looking good steadfast. No, no, it certainly is not. He's desperately trying to crush this army but there's just there's just too much stuff for Vindicta he refuses to let Namshar get a wraparound on his horse big with mine right there this is just a matter of Vindicta getting a lead and never really letting it go oh, and Namshar no. throwing away endless waves at the Terran player and not being able to break his opponent yeah just splattered Zerg flying everywhere into the water GG